Hi, I'm Kylie. And I'm Isabel. And, and you're watching Weekly, Weekly Wolf. Wolf. Yesterday was Easter. Isabel, did you do anything for Easter? We couldn't leave the house, but I ended up watching Hop, if anybody remembers what that movie is. That's fun. I didn't really do anything for Easter as well, because we're in quarantine. Let's go see what some of the kids from the elementary talked about their plans for celebrating Easter at home with our reporter, Claire. So what are your plans for celebrating Easter at home? Um, we have got, we just moved and we got five acres of land out. So we're planning to hide eggs everywhere. And it's it's going to be a while. So first, we're going to go to church online. And after church, we'll get these Easter baskets with treats and other things inside. Then we will try to do an Easter egg hunt in our backyard. Is that a tradition? Uh, no, I don't think we did anything in 2018. We did two events, one in 2017 and in 2019 we also did something, but it wasn't at home. Uh, yes, we do have a tradition. We get Easter baskets and do the New Year's Easter egg hunt on the base. Another tradition is going to church. How long has it, have those been traditions? Uh, since I was born. Thanks, Claire. I wonder what the weather will be like this week. Me too. Let's go see with Nate. Thank you. I'm not Nate, but hi. So this week's weather will be a little colder than it was last week with temperatures ranging from the low 30s to high 60s. This week we'll be experiencing a little bit of rain on Tuesday and Friday, and the rest of the week will be partly cloudy. Next week we'll be experiencing warmer temperatures again, ranging from the low 50s to high 70s. Let's go back to our anchors. Thank you. Do you play Nintendo Switch games, Kylie? I do. I especially like Animal Crossing. Did you know that game, along with others, has been really popular during this quarantine? Yeah, let's go find out more with Kenzie. The games Ring Fit Adventure and Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch have been incredibly popular the last few weeks. The games are selling out in many places. The Nintendo Switch itself has stopped manufacturing, and all of the remaining have sold out. Animal Crossing has been keeping people busy by exploring an island, making new friends, and adding additions onto one's home. Ring Fit Adventure allows people to get exercise from home while playing a game where you go on an adventure in the game. Reporting for Weekly Wolf, I'm Kinsey. Thanks, Kinsey. In the midst of the pandemic, some of our students have accomplished many things. Ansley, a pre-K student, did a great job drawing the American flag. Stella, a first grader, ran three miles, an impressive feat from this little girl. Karis, in seventh grade, learned how to rope, band, and tag a calf. Hey everybody, this is McKenzie. I'm trying to make the best of being quarantined by spending time with my family, taking care of my animals, and doing my schoolwork. I hope you guys are having a great time, and I miss you guys. Um, be safe and be healthy. Marissa, one of our freshmen, sewed masks with her mom for the Comanche County and Southern Western Hospitals. And finally, Jace, one of our seniors, learned how to make, melt, and pour soap. We are so proud of everyone's accomplishments and hope to see more. Speaking of the pandemic, our mayor has taken further steps to decrease the speed of the coronavirus. Let's go see why with Raven. A few weeks ago, the mayor, Stan Booker, enacted the Shelter in Place Act, which will set in stone some extensive quarantine rules. As of the third, some changes to essential buildings include closures of athletic courts and courses, Walmart's clothing and general sporting goods sections, manual car wash services, furniture stores excluding their appliance sections, and sporting goods stores excluding their guns and ammunition sections. Furthermore, max occupancy of 100 people in buildings exceeding 50,000 square feet and those with fewer having a max density of one person per 500 square feet. Additionally, as of the 6th, Citizens without documentation are required to be in their homes from 11 at night to 5 the following morning. Refillable water bottles should not be refilled in public places. Gatherings are limited to 6 people, except funerals, which have a max of 10. The 6th also marked more changes to essential businesses, including the 6-foot distance between people and lines, sanitization, offered and sneeze guards required at points of sales such as cash registers and implements such as encouraging the use of shopping carts and arrows 
indicating directions to go while shopping. And lastly, more signage in stores, reminding customers of these rules. Stay on the safe side and once again, stay vigilant as this pandemic continues. Reporting for Weekly Wolf, I'm Raven. Thanks, Raven. The secondary students and teachers have recently been using the Slack app to communicate with one another digitally. We use the app mostly for school-related things, but sometimes Mrs. St. Cross gives us some pretty cool challenges. One of the first challenges was seeing whose pecker received the most likes. Raven's cool chameleon, Lonnie, won this challenge with 15 hearts and 7 starstruck emojis. And in second place was my cat, Smokey. Bolden's grandmother's adorable chihuahua, Chica, won an honorable mention in the dog category. And in the cat category, Dawn's former cat, Tom Riddle, won an honorable mention. Another honorable mention was Lydia's bird, Zell. Great job, everyone's pets were so cute. Hey Kylie, do you like movies? Yes, my favorite movie is Wrench the Musical. What about you? Personally, my favorite is Beauty and the Beast. Either version. That's awesome. Well, currently many movies are postponing their release dates since we're stuck inside due to the virus. At least that means we'll get to watch them after the pandemic is over. Let's go find out more with Maddie. Movies originally set to release right now are having to postpone their release dates because of COVID-19. The release date for the live-action remake of Mulan, originally set for March 27th of this year, has been moved to July 24th. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has also shifted its timeline in response to the pandemic. The next Marvel movie, Black Widow's release date, has been moved to November 6th, which was when Eternals was going to release. The release date of Eternals has moved to February 12th, 2021. The original release date of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings Marvel movies after that one have also been pushed back in the same way. The good news is that Disney is putting movies on Disney Plus early so that we can have more entertainment during our self-quarantine. Disney's most recent movie, Onward, hit cinemas on March 6th. It stayed on in cinemas for only two weeks because the theaters needed to close. This is extremely short compared to other Disney movies that have stayed in cinemas for over six months. Disney now had to make a difficult choice of whether they should re-release the movie or release it now for home entertainment. They thankfully chose the latter, so Onward is available to buy or rent online or stream in Disney+. Plus. Disney also brought Frozen 2 to Disney+, Plus three months earlier than they were going to. Upcoming Disney movie Artemis Fowl, originally set to be in theaters on May 29th, will instead debut on the streaming platform in the summer. Disney made some rare decisions due to the unique situation but their audiences will be pleased. Reporting for Weekly Wolf, I'm Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. There were a bunch of people who submitted videos for the 22nd challenge this week. You guys are all really talented. Yes, but there can only be a few winners. Let's watch the most liked 20 second videos. This week we only had three submissions, so everyone's a winner. In third place, we have me practicing for my recital. place we have Kylie playing the ukulele and her brother Caleb singing. I'm Caleb and I'm Kylie and, and this, this is, is our talent. talent. have Jocelyn practicing her aerial cartwheels. Thank you. This week we have a cooking challenge on Facebook. Comment on the London Academy Facebook page with an appetizing photo of a dish you have cooked at home. The top three photos will win and be featured on this broadcast. Good morning Las Lobos! 
a great work last week in the PE Challenge. I saw some phenomenal efforts. I appreciate that. I want you to continue to share this week's uh, efforts with your classmates on video. Hey, this week's PE Challenge is the push-up. We're either gonna do a modified approach, a standard approach, or the advanced approach. A modified is a, a knee push-up, standard is a normal push-up. Um, going all the way down till your arms are parallel, back straight, head up. Advanced approach, I'll leave that to your imagination. But uh, you can look for opportunities to uh, um, do inclined push-ups. Just do them well. Good luck this week as you work through this. I want five good push-ups anytime you're tired of that studying and need a break. Good luck, Globals. Let's take a look at the current team scores. Now let's see with Mrs. Smith with the indispensable leadership trait of the week. Good morning, Lass. I hope you enjoyed your Easter weekend. I hope you unplugged from all technology and just enjoyed a, a weekend of um, relaxing and, and enjoying your family. Um, I know I did. <laughs> so we are on our last leadership trait, and that is number 21, vision. Vision isn't necessarily being able to see, it's what you see when you look, okay? So pick something in your house and just look at it right now. Just look at it. Do you see your heart? Do you see your small intestines? No, you see the thing you're looking at, right? <laughs> okay? Vision is not looking inward and looking at our situation is looking at what's out there in the future what's what's in front of you okay and the item you chose to look at is in front of you so vision is looking um, ahead as to where you're going okay to what you're doing so it is somewhat to do with looking but it's more of an idea of, of what you're looking at okay you can only seize what you can see Okay, if you can't see it, it's not going to happen. All right, if you are sitting in your house saying we're never going to get out of here, then you can't visualize what it would be like to be back to normal. Okay, but if you can see that this may be a temporary stop and there are all, all kinds of things you never had time to do before that now you can do and you can use that time wisely, but you can see a vision of going back better prepared to face face the reality of what our, our normal lives are like, okay, because you've had this rest time, okay, so, so 
vision looks ahead okay vision looks at um, even even things that might not be good one of the parents wrote me that uh, we're very likely looking at doing this again next winter because the vaccines will not be ready that scares me but it also makes me start to visualize what the future might look like that we can't just ditch what we learn we have to grow from where we were so that if this happens on a moment's notice and we don't have spring break to, re to prepare we can just go right on with our with our learning so so vision can can show you how to prepare for things that are bad and it can show you how to rise to things you want to get to okay let's talk about the school with that mrs. Johnson had a vision of private education okay um, for gifted specifically for gifted and talented okay and she and mr. Johnson envisioned where that could be and they came up with this great little area where we're kind of tucked back and, a, and away from everything else okay um, I came in and I envisioned, I, I had a vision for a, a secondary school. Mrs. Johnson's vision only went to eighth grade. Mine was all the way to high school. And Mr. Johnson and I came and, and we built the, the, the junior high and high school. And then Mr. Smith came in and he had a vision for the athletic program. And it took a couple of years, but, but we now have an athletic program and it's getting better every year. And now Mr. and Mrs. St. Cross have come in and with their business expertise, they are making us a business. They are saying, look, this is something that we could actually grow. Not necessarily our campus. We, we have a, a top number for our campus and that's 248. That's 18 per class except for our two C cub classes that are 16. But maybe this idea might be able to go to other places. And so we're starting to look at how we can help others to do what we do. Okay, so they've got the business sense. All of these were visions. And I got to tell you, I have walked a secondary building, a new secondary building out in that field for years. I, I, I think probably 15 years I've been here. I've been out there pacing off where would be the, the science lab and where would be. And, and as we grow closer to possibly having a new secondary building, I, I'm getting excited. And I've, I've worked with floor models. And I've, I've, I've said, where can we go? What could we do to make this a great school? So that's vision. Okay. So the first thing you need to know is it starts from within. Okay, it doesn't look within, it starts from within. It's a burning desire that you, make, you want to make happen, okay? I ask you every year at our conferences what you want to be, okay? Because it's already starting to stir in you. You, don't, you may not recognize it, but you're already starting to be better at certain things than others, okay? Some of you are better at math. Some of you are better at the language arts, okay? It's already starting to manifest itself. So I just want you to keep an eye on it. Okay, someday it's going to make itself very clear to you, but it still might not be what you actually do. Okay, it might be that that's something you're going to do, but it's going to come after a few other steps. Okay, but that's my job is to help you get a vision of the future. I tell my older kids that right now you're a boat on the water and you cannot see the shore. But once you can see kind of what you want to want to do, I'm that person that stands in the boat and says, there's the shore. There's the shore. And when you start to float the other way, go, wait, 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 there's the shore. And if, if we need to change the shore, if we need to say, oh, we're not going for that anymore, we're going over here, then okay, I point to the new one. And I say, okay, here's how to get to that shore. Okay? So, so our jobs as teachers and parents are to help you get to your shoreline, which is that vision you have for your future. Okay? Vision draws on your history. I just said that. You're starting to become good at certain things. That's your history. Okay? Sometimes people have um, uh, trauma in their life. Maybe a, a, they spend a lot of time in a, in a there's the bills again, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the, uh, um, they've spent a lot of time maybe in the hospital. Well, that might cause them to become, want to become a doctor or a nurse because they got good care and they want to pay it forward. So it draws on your history. Vision meets other people's needs. All right. Now you can test whether you have vision by this. If you're sitting in your house, playing video games, sitting on the couch watching TV and going, I'm bored, I don't want to be here, this is horrible, you don't have vision, okay? You want somebody else to give you the vision. But if you're thinking of ways that you could help others, if you're thinking, wow, we should organize something like a, 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 
clapping for the, the medical workers in our neighborhood or something. Or I should put up pictures on my window so that when people walk by, they can see the hearts. I think there's a, a, a campaign out there to put hearts on your, or Easter eggs on your window and people go around and collect them. Okay. And, and you can, you can do that. If you're looking at how you can make things better, if you're looking at what you can do now to make whenever we get back to our normal lives better, then you have vision. Okay. But if you're just sitting around whining about your situation, you don't have vision, okay? And vision helps you gather resources, okay? Um, we've all said, I never have time. I don't have time to do that. Hopefully, we're using this time, okay? One of the things that I have never had time to do is sit down and write what we do, okay? So I'm going to use the time I have, now that I'm kind of getting this under my belt, to write what we do. And then I'm going to teach the teachers, okay? And Mrs. Johnson's going to teach the teachers, and we're going to show them. This is how we have success. This is how we run a classroom, okay? So it helps you gather those resources up so that you can equip people or equip yourself or equip those around you, especially your organization, to do better things, okay? All right, if you don't have vision, if, you don't, if, you're, if you're the leader of a company and you don't know where that company is going, then that company fails during this time. Okay, so here it is in a nutshell. There are a lot of bad things happening during this time in the world, okay? There are people that are dying. There are people who are overwhelmed with the workload they have. There are people who have no work at all because they've lost their job. There are um, people who do not have enough money to buy food. There's a lot of sadness going on right now. But if you have vision, you can see that we will return to, to somewhat of a normal existence. There'll be some changes, but we'll, we'll do that. And if you have vision, you look at where you could help, okay? And there are kids all over the nation who are helping in any way from making cards for um, older people who are stuck um, inside um, to, to helping bag food for families who don't have enough food. Um, there's just all kinds of things. Look on the internet. And I know you see people on the internet who are kids who are sneezing on others on purpose. Those people, they don't have vision. They don't even have a heart, okay? Um, but maybe you as a kid could start a campaign that says, hey, this isn't okay. Maybe you could come up with some kind of phrase that shows we're not going to be those kind of kids, okay? We're not going to be the kind of people, the teens, who go around and sneeze on people because we think it's funny, okay? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to get kids to, to quit looking inside instead of looking forward. But I know that you are future leaders and you can do that. So I challenge you today, instead of seeing the giants of the bad that's there, to see the opportunity ahead. This is a reference um, actually from the Old Testament. Um, after the Israelites have been traveling for, you know, 40 years. Uh, well, not even 40 years. This was back at the beginning. Um, God told him to go over and look at the land he had promised. And 10 out of the 12 spies that went and looked at it said, oh, they're giants. We could never conquer them. We could never do this. And only two said, we could do this. And, and because of that, the Israelites got to wander for another 40 years because they didn't have vision. They couldn't see what God had ahead for them. So, so that reference when we say all you see are giants is that's what we're talking about. If all you see is, oh, what was us? This is awful. How long is it going to last? We don't know. I'll tell you that the, the city in China um, that was the epicenter came out of their quarantine 76 days later. That's the middle of June for us, almost the end of June for us. I don't know if we've done a better job than they did or not. I don't know when this will end. But I do know I'm using this time to make things happen, and there's a lot of good things happening, okay? If nothing else, dinner at the table with our family might have come back. We've, we've lost that. Maybe that came back. Maybe you've picked up a book and you actually have discovered that losing yourself in adventure is a great way to spend some time. I don't know. Maybe it's just talking to your family members. Maybe it's playing board games again. You know, sometimes I, I used to, we used to have board, board game night every Saturday night at my house when I was growing up. And maybe that's something that your family just now has incorporated. But there are good things that are going to come out of this, okay? So look at those good things and don't let the giants of the bad things scare you into doing nothing at all. If you're a true leader, figure out your place and what you can do to help, okay? Gather your resources, meet other people's needs, 
And I guarantee you that this will become part of your history that determines where your vision leads you. Okay, does that make sense? All right, I'm not sure where we're going after this. I don't know exactly. We've done all 21 of the indispens indispensable leadership qualities. Um, I may do a little review, or we may go on with something else. All I know is that uh, that you are going to be great leaders. Use what I've taught you this year. We'll keep those posters up next year, and you can go back and revisit those, and maybe I'll come up with some way to just give your family all 21 of those traits and what we've learned over the years so you can review them and learn how to be a good leader because that's what we're training you to do, become the leaders of the world. And leaders have to make hard decisions like quarantining, okay? Um, they won't always be popular, but you'll do what's right for the people. Um, have a, a great short week, and we'll see you next week. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching Weekly Wolf. See you next time. Bye. Bye.